What's going on YouTube? Klaus here from Plan BC. So in this video, we go through six criticisms of the Game Changers, which has just come out and had a uh, fantastic uh, reception. But we'll see in this video that some of the sort of keto meat-based advocates don't like it. And uh, we're going to talk to James Wilkes, the producer of the documentary, about some of the criticisms, starting with Men's Health, who did a piece a couple of weeks ago. Hope you enjoy. The Men's Health article started off um, saying that the whole film was built around uh, the study about the Roman gladiators, which I came across. And so therefore said that basically, it was, so they said it wasn't a study. They said it wasn't peer reviewed, there was no control group, and it wasn't published in a peer, uh, a peer reviewed medical journal. Well, first of all, there was a control group, it was a study, and it was published, the, the research was published in two uh, peer reviewed scientific medical journals. Um, and then second of all, the whole film isn't based on the findings of the gladiators. That was just really an inciting incident for me to start looking into other research. But the Men's Health article goes on and it's extremely biased. I and mean, if you look at the author of the article, first of all, he sells two books um, heavily promoting a meat-based diet. Then he interviews two experts, um, you know, one of which uh, had pretty poor credentials. The other one uh, is uh, funded by the meat industry. It's actually paid as a paid spokesperson uh, by the Beef Checkoff Program. So you've got to dig in and see what are the motives of the people. Also sells a book um, you know, promoting a meat-based diet. So you've got to go look at um, where the funding's coming from and who's influencing these articles. Since then, Dr. James Loomis, the former team physician for the St. Louis Cardinals and St. Louis Rams, who was featured in the film, came out and wrote a rebuttal Men's Health sort of had to tuck their tail between their legs and um, make some edits to that article. So they actually changed the article? They have edited the article, but not really. They, you know, they, they've made a couple of changes, but it was pretty weak and they, they certainly could have made more. The second kind of criticism of the film um, from a few people has been that the athletes, some of the athletes in the film didn't actually build their muscle and their physiques from vegan food. Like one of uh, the quotes from somebody was, Arnold Schwarzenegger would never be Mr. Olympia with potatoes, lentils and tofu. Do you give any credibility to these kind of criticisms? You know, to me, it feels like it makes sense, but when you think about it, it really doesn't. So all protein originates in plants, and animals are just the middlemen. So where did that protein come originally? That's the macronutrient that people are worried about. Well, the animals that you're eating, they got their protein from the plants. So I just don't, really don't see a good argument for it. You know, I used to think that you had to eat animal foods to get the protein. Um, but when you start reading this, realizing this middleman concept, and the fact that all that protein does originate and you want to get it from the source, right? Because the animals are doing you a disservice. They're robbing the food of fiber and phytonutrients. They're concentrating the toxic heavy metals and the pesticides. And they're adding in inflammatory mediators, which are not good for athletic performance, and they're not good for health. The next uh, criticism was misleading use of information. I think you've covered some of this, but um, it's one of the criticisms was there are no qualified and experienced registered dietitians in the film. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, that is a concern. We've got to remember that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, which gives the qualification for the registered dietitian, is funded by industry as well. So if you look at um, the bottom of the handout in the educational materials for registered, dietitian, for registered dietitians during their degree, um, you know, when it says that it should have three servings of dairy a day, uh, at the bottom of the handout it says this uh, handout is sponsored by the National Dairy Council. So you've got to really look at... Um, you know, where the funding's coming from again. We're mm -hmm. being misled, and it's not just the general public, it's also uh, the registered dietitians as well. But when you look at the people that we've got in the film, I mean, you can get one doctor or one dietitian to say anything you want. So we went to the world's leading uh, nutrition researchers and anthropologists. So, you know, we had Dr. Walter Willett, who was the chair of um, nutrition at Harvard at the time, the most published nutrition researcher in the world. Dr. Rick, Dr. Richard Rangham, who's the chair of anthropology at Harvard, um, let's see, Dr. Aaron Spitz, who's the lead delegate of urology for the entire American Medical Association. Uh, Dr. Robert Vogel, who's the co-chair of the Cardiovascular Committee for the NFL. Uh, Dr. Kim Williams, who's the president of the American College of Cardiology. So not only did we take um, the preponderance of evidence for the science, so anything that we quoted in the science was based on the preponderance of evidence, uh, but we also interviewed the world's leading researchers. Um, so it's you know, you can try and pick, you know, pick apart anything. 
How, um, how, how did he do that? Because he obviously wanted to make it evidence-based, factual, and entertaining. Entertainment was a big part of it, right? Because yeah. you want to draw people in and show people the, the amazing stories. So how difficult was it to choose which doctors to put in when there's such a finite amount of time? Yeah, it's tricky, right? Because there's some really good doctors in the plant-based space, you know, like um, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Campbell. Um, but those sort of people have been seen a lot. Um, and they're also very... Um, well known and they're very sort of in the plant-based movement. Uh, yeah, they're, so, they're perceived as being entrenched in that kind of mindset. Right, and so the general public that aren't plant-based might go, oh, well, yeah, they're biased because they, you know, that's their point of view. So we just thought we'd go to, um, you know, unbi- you know, not that they're biased at all anyway, but people might think that. Um, so we just went to literally to find the world's best, you know, go to Harvard, go to the chair of nutrition at Harvard, go to the chair of anthropology at Harvard and ask them their opinions. You know, and it's consensus. You know, we're built to eat plants and uh, it's better for us. And, you know, Dr. Walter Willett, um, again, the chair of uh, nutrition at Harvard at the time when we filmed, um, said that, you know, when you look at dairy consumption and prostate cancer, that there is a, a pretty clear causal link. So to have someone, one of the greatest nutrition researchers on the planet, say there's not just a strong correlation, but there's a causal link between those two. Is really incredible. I mean, he couldn't be saying those things if there wasn't sufficient data. He'd be putting his job on the line. I think what you said refutes the fourth point I've got down, which is a criticism, which is too agenda-led. For example, a quote from somebody online is, there's fear-mongering around fat, and uh, it's clear plant-based agenda. Well, I don't know where they're getting the point about um, the fear-mongering is fat, because <clears throat> we're certainly not anti-fat. I'm not anti-fat. It's not, people focus too much on the macronutrient ratios, high fat, low fat, high carb, low carb, high protein, low protein. But the reality is it's the quality of the protein that's more important. So Harvard did a meta-analysis last year on low fat, low carb diets. And what they noticed is if you took um, carbohydrates and you replaced those in the diet with fats from animal sources, your increase of uh, risk of death went up by 18%. But if you took those carbohydrates out of your diet and replaced them with protein and fat from plant-based sources, your risk of uh, death went down by 18% uh, from baseline. So it's not about high fat, low fat, high carb, low carb. It's about the quality of those nutrients. So the fifth kind of main criticism from people that watch the film, the naysayers and the the keto, the meat-based kind of people, the the shock jocks that want to hate on the film, uh, one of the things they've talked about is kind of general conspiracy theories. Like to give a quote, one person said, it's full of mostly former athletes that probably just want a paycheck. Uh, does being uh, plant-based or in the documentary that you've made result in them getting more money with these people paid? Like Arnold Schwarzenegger, was he paid to be in it? No, I mean, first of all, none of the people that were in the film were paid to be in the film. Second of all, you know, James Cameron, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jackie Chan, Lewis Hamilton, Chris Paul, Novak Djokovic, don't make a penny from being in the film. And even if a film made lots of money, those executive producers are not making a dime. They did it because they believe in uh, the project and they believe in plant-based eating. Sure, and I guess some of the people even funding it are probably doing it not because they want anything back, but just because they believe in the mission, right? They're doing it for the social return, not for the financial return. Right, and so the sixth main point of criticism was there was a lack of female representation, which I think is a fair point, and yep. um, you probably got a, a response to that. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more males in the film than there are females. There are some really powerful females in the film. Dottie Bausch, the eight-time uh, USA national cycling champion and Olympic medalist. Um, Morgan Mitchell, who's the 400-meter Australian champion uh, and um, Olympian as well. Um, and there's also some really powerful females that we filmed that unfortunately didn't make the cut. So like Tia Blanco, the two-time uh, world surfing champion, or Cara Lang. Um, the youngest person ever to score a goal uh, in Olympic soccer um, for Canada. So, and there's others as well that we filmed, just unfortunately didn't make the cut. The reason that there was more men is because one of the underlying myths, really the underlying myth under all of this, sure, we've got the, you know, the myth that you need uh, meat for protein and there's not enough protein in plants, that myth. But underlying that, I think there's this real men eat meat myth. And that's evident by the fact that eight out of 10 vegetarians, vegans, plant-based eaters are female. Um, You know, fast food menus are driven by young men. Uh, Young men eat twice as much meat as women. So there's a lot at play here um, as to why uh, there's a lot more male focus. 